Oh, that was that looks sick. speedy. Right, a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how I built my latest project, which is this rather large hydroplane airboat that has some serious heft. The boat has some serious potential, but as with many ambitious projects on this scale, I had to do a little bit more work to get it working just so. What you watched just a few seconds ago was some footage from test number two, which is where I investigated how the modifications to this boat performed. This video is all about those modifications, how they helped and what I'm going to do next. We'll cover the mods to the rudder, the planing skid, the sponsons, the hull, and I'll also reveal why I'm going to have to fix the thing after this big mistake. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Kiwico. More about them later. A glassy still evening set the stage for test number two. A drone reconnaissance flight to check for ducks confirmed that the conditions were absolutely perfect to really push the boat out. Unlike last time, we had a rescue boat on standby. The HMS Nippy Shippy, featured in some of my previous videos, was pressed back into service with some repairs to its rudder and elevator. Check out my other videos to see more on this craft. I'm here with Mike, um, my glamorous assistant, who's helped out many times on the channel before. Unfortunately, I had forgotten my Wellington boots again, but had got a GPS to record the speed. But what about the mods? Well, first off, I had re-engineered the steering mechanism. I mentioned on the last video that I rushed the rudder assembly a little bit, and this was because of the uh, time restraints that I was under. Um, so yeah, I was taking advantage of some good weather, and also I wanted to finish a video um, for you chaps to watch. Um, but yeah, that meant that I had to go back to it after it inevitably failed um, on the very first uh, go across the lake. Firstly, I cut a large rudder from an aluminium sheet and sharpened the leading and trailing edges to help it cut through the water with minimum resistance. Next, I printed a connector that would help it firmly attach to the steering rod. With everything more securely mounted to the hull, this definitely was an improvement over the last setup, but by the time I'd finished it, it was decided to purchase a proper CNC cut boat rudder for a long-term solution. To gain some confidence in the new steering system, I decided to take the boat out on a little taxi test before opening up the throttle. I'm a bit nervous, I'm not sure if you can tell. I'll just bring it around in a circle. Unfortunately, as expected, the turning circle wasn't all that tight, meaning I ended up regretting my choice of shoe wear once again. Right. Sorry chaps, but I'm gonna get my feet wet again. Yeah, you were right, I needed wellies. Now, so go. On this little blast into the lake, I got a chance to observe how my next mod worked, the tail skid. Well, the, uh, the skid on the back certainly works, doesn't it? This was probably the most obvious problem on test number one. Um, the tail didn't raise out of the water as expected, so I needed to give the tail a bit more hydrodynamic lift. To do this, I simply cut another sheet of aluminium to size with a hacksaw, filed its edges down a bit and glued it securely to the underside of the boat, leaving a few centimetres at the rear for the planing point to be visible. Talking of planing points, I decided to print a pair of experimental planing shoes for the sponsons. These planing points were printed on my 3D printer and are simply designed to have as little contact with the water as possible. So the faster the boat goes, the higher the boat will raise out of the water and the less area the boat will um, have in contact with the actual water. When the boat's traveling at extreme speeds, so close to 100 miles an hour, there'll be a very, very small amount of contact area. It's all about taking it a step at a time with a project like this. With some of the slower and a bit more boring tests out of the way, and with everything on the hydroplane seeming to be in order, I felt I could give it the beans and have a jolly good go at some higher speeds. So I'm going to take it up the lake yep. fairly quick. <laughs> Oh, 
that was like no throttle. I turned the boat around and lined it up for a short mid power run down the small lake. Is that good? Yep, that's good. Yes, look at that. Oh, that's sick. The ducks. <laughs> that was that looks sick. Speedy. Right, let's try that again. So that was pretty good. Immediately, I could see that the hydroplane was stable, quite smooth, and lifting all of the way up onto its points as designed. On the points, freed up from a lot of water drag, it seemed to want to accelerate too. However, slowing the footage down, it's quite clear to see that the floats were jumping around all over the place as the carbon arms flexed, acting a little like suspension. This might not seem like a bad thing, but in a high-speed oscillation, it might be catastrophic, so fixing this was something to consider for the future. Let's try that again. Right, I'm going to crop in a bit further right this time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's like proper getting on the points. That's yeah, great. see that. Right, I'll bring it in in a second. doing something weird. Okay, it's noisy. During these little runs, I felt something getting worse. Somehow the boat seemed to be getting heavier and draggier as I tried to get it up onto the plane. As I turned around to head home, the cause became apparent. I feel like the, one of the floats is, is listing a bit. Yeah, it looks like the left one. That's weird. I reckon the one of the floats is full of water. Sorry, German viewers. Did its job. <laughs> it stopped it. <laughs> why did you say German viewers? I just said, uh, that's why. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, no. We've had a breach. How's that happened? Well, it was got... going well for yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah, So, yes, viewers, um, obviously we've had a leak in one of the sponsons, which is a bit weird, but it was it was running really well. I was, I was pleased with that. I think... Um, it's a good start, and that's what we're going to... I'd be interested in how fast it was going, it seems. Well, we can find out. Hmm. That's, uh, that's not ideal. Something's happened with the wood around the bottom. Just put your hand in there. Yeah, my finger shouldn't be in this hole. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Well, it doesn't really matter. If I've written these floats off, I can always build some new ones. It's yeah. a good excuse to, isn't it? It seems a sizable force had been applied to the bottoms of the sponsons as they rode the surface of the water, which caused the thin balsa wood on one of them to give in. This short-sightedness wasn't ideal, but it did confirm to me that perhaps we need to start moving beyond wood for this sort of application and onto more complex composite materials, such as carbon. I might explore making some new floats in a future video, so keep an eye out for that. For now though, I decided to do a bit more bodging. It's in times like this that you appreciate the, uh, the magnificent creation that is duct tape. Round three. Right, for this one I'm going to actually send it and see what happens. Okay, I'm very much looking forward to this. Right, ready? Oof. Right, the back end came out there. With a bit more throttle, I had discovered a new problem. As anticipated, the high thrust line of the motors had been able to yank the entire rear of the boat from the water. If you look closely enough, you can see that re-entry actually bends the rudder slightly, confirming that I need that CNC rudder. This isn't a fundamental issue as I can adjust the thrust angle, but it did the, limit yeah. the potential of the boat for that evening's test. So I decided to turn the boat around and bring it back in one piece for another day. But then Mike asked a question. Just Okay. What are you going to turn it up to? 11. Nice. That, as it would transpire, was not a good idea. <laughs> I forgot that these boats don't have brakes. <laughs> oh no. Oh dear. As James Bond would say. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, we're definitely going to have to build some more floats here. <laughs> 
So yes, after literally five minutes or less than five minutes of running time of this boat, I have crashed it already and it needs some work. So yes, on the other side of this, <laughs> the sponsor is actually hanging off. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have to do some work, some serious modifications, but that's okay. That's, um, that's good. I can take what I've learnt from the five minutes of running time <laughs> and uh, spend several more hours um, modifying this thing. I now have a lot more knowledge than I did on what was working and what, uh, what I think will work better in the future. So this is a really good excuse to go slightly back to the drawing board and bring some new ideas to the boat. Obviously, it's a bit annoying that the boat didn't get the chance to reach higher speeds before the rebuild, but how fast did it actually go on its fastest run? So 33 miles an hour, that's one third of the record, or under one third of the record, um, which is 103 miles an hour. Yep, not all that brilliant. Despite this, I'm confident the ideas for modifications I have can unlock the full potential of the design and allow me to go full throttle on a much larger lake. As you can probably tell, I produce these videos to show people the cool things that you can build and the interesting subjects you can learn about through hands-on DIY engineering. I especially hope to encourage kids to learn about these things, and that's also the aim of the sponsor of this week's video, KiwiCo. KiwiCo creates super cool hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in science, technology, engineering, art and mathematics. KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. Each box comes with all of the supplies needed for that month's project, which means that you don't have to go out and visit the hardware store. It also includes detailed kid-friendly instructions and an educational magazine filled with content to learn even more about the crates theme. I'm really impressed with how KiwiCo used their manuals to teach you not only how to put the things together, but also why certain things like diodes and capacitors and things relevant to the kit actually work. The KiwiCo store also allows you the flexibility of purchasing individual projects or even value packs should you see one that takes your fancy. These kits are a really good alternative to learning everything through a screen and can help to get kids back in learning mode before the school holidays end. So check out kiwico.com slash projectair for 20% of everything on the site. That includes subscriptions and individual products. I'll post a link in the description down below so check that out. Thank you very much to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. The next vid will probably be on something a bit different to the hydroplane because I don't want to oversaturate the channel with boat videos. Um, so yeah, check out the next one um, coming in in a few weeks time. And yeah, I will catch you then. Make sure to give this video a like on your way out. Check out the other videos on my channel. Um, I've got loads of stuff for you to, to watch on there. And yeah, subscribe if you've not already. I will uh, very much appreciate that. And I will see you on the next video um, if you are subscribed. So, cheers. I will catch you then. Yeah. Wish me luck with the, uh, the modifications. <laughs>